So this question looks a lot like a simplify question. We're going to see if it actually is. But um, the anatomy of a simplify question is that the question itself is between one and three lines long. So this is good, two and a half lines. And probably more importantly from a visual standpoint, um, will contain either an expression or an equation, right? So we have an equation. So we have an equation and we have a short question. That's typically a telltale sign that it's a simplified question. So what do I do with simplified questions? Well, first of all, I recognize them and for the reasons that I just showed, equation or expression um, there and a short question. So second of all, I then take whatever that equation or provided expression is and I simplify it. So I'm gonna look at what's been provided and see, is there anything I can do to simplify this? Now, there's nothing immediately that I can do. There's no like terms here or anything like that. However, I can tell that I can complete the square here, which then means that I'm dealing with circles. And that is gonna cause me to at least read the question before I go ahead and simplify. Uh, easier questions, I might just simplify and be done with it. but. Because we're dealing with circles, I'm not sure if the question is asking for the center of the circle, the radius of the circle, like what it's asking for. And I want to make sure I don't do too much work. So the question says in the xy plane, the graph of the given equation is a circle. If this circle is inscribed in a square, so what does that mean? So visually that looks like this, square, circle, touches those four places. Um, what is the perimeter of the square? Okay, so that means if I can find the radius of the circle, that would mean that I can find the diameter of the circle. And the diameter of the circle will be the exact same length as a side of a square. And I can then multiply that by four. So in essence, I'm doing four times the diameter. 4D, it, four times the diameter of the circle is gonna be equal to my perimeter. So that's my formula that I'm gonna use in order to find the answer to this question. But to figure that out, remember again, I start off with finding the radius. So the area, or the area, the formula or the equation of a circle looks like this. X minus H squared plus um, Y minus K squared equals R squared. So that's where my R comes in. And I need to use a simplification process or a factoring process called complete the square. To do that, I take my first two terms, my x squared minus 10x, and I take, the, I take half of that second number, which is negative 10, half of that is negative five. I then square it, negative five squared is positive 25, and I add it in, okay? I then do the exact same thing with my next set, my y's. So I have my positive y squared minus six y. I take half of that negative six y, or negative six, I'm sorry, and I get a negative three. I square negative three, which is positive nine, and I add it. Now I'm gonna take this negative 47 over, so I'm gonna have equals 47. But also I need to take advantage or take control of the fact that I did just add 25 to the left-hand side of this equation. So because of algebra rules, I must also add 25 to the right-hand side of the equation in order to keep this equation balanced. I also added nine to the left-hand side of this equation. That number was not there prior, which means, again, according to the algebra rules, I have to also add nine to the right side of the equation in order to keep the equation balanced. Now, what was the point of adding 25 and nine? What's the point of this process of completing the square? Well, here's the point. Now I have a trinomial that is actually a perfect square, okay? And I can find that by just taking the first term x, half the middle term, half that 10, so back we're getting right back to that negative five we had. And I just close it up and put a squared on it. And if you wanna do the math, you'll see that x minus five, inside parentheses, squared, is in fact equal to x squared minus 10x plus 25. And we do the same thing with the y's, right? So y, if you recall, I go, my, again, half of my negative six, so minus three, close it up and squared. And you'll see that when you do the math there, it is in fact equal to y squared minus six y plus nine. So that's the benefit of completing the square. And on this side, I wanna add up all my units together. I don't have the use of a calculator on this section. Um, so I'm not gonna do mental math because I wouldn't want you to do mental math. So I'm gonna just put it all out here. Uh, seven plus five is 12, 12 plus nine is 21, so two and one. And then two plus four, six plus two is eight, so that becomes 81. Okay, so here's the deal. All I care about is finding R. 
Now, 81 is in my r squared position, which means I can just say r squared is the same as 81, or r squared equals 81, and therefore r is equal to 9. So I go back up to my circle here. Let's erase this and make it a little bit better, in fact. So now I know, well, if this is 9, that means my diameter is is 18, right? I have two nines, basically, two radii. So my diameter is 18, so D is 18. And that means that four times 18 is my perimeter. Well, four times 18, if I do the math there, four times 10 is 40, four times eight is 32, 40 plus 32 is 72. So my perimeter must be 72. And that's why my answer here is choice C. So a little bit harder of a question because we had to know this, first of all, the question does not provide the equation for a circle for you inside the equation. You also had to know how to use this process of completing the square, right? So if you don't know that, never learned it, forgot it, please do look up some sample questions on how to do that because um, that's very useful. And then we had to understand how does a circle relate to the square? And that's where this idea, the strategy, along with simplify of plug-in picture, right, becomes useful. Because seeing this, seeing this line here, and seeing this line here, and knowing that those two must be the same, is hopefully what gets you to see the connection between the circle and the square. Because otherwise, there isn't a connection, right? And I could have drawn my radii vertically if I wanted as well, like that doesn't matter. If I had drawn it um, like diagonally through the circle, I would not have been able to see it visually so well, so that's another thing to know um, that may just come with practice. So after you've seen this video and after you've done some, I would just always draw it either vertically or horizontally so you can match it to a side of the square. 